heavy load exerting body. In the heart of Berlin lies a remnant of the Nazi party's sinister legacy, the mysterious Schwerbelastungskörper, or heavy load exerting body. This massive concrete cylinder, reaching 46 feet in height and weighing a colossal 28 million pounds, was constructed in 1941 by Albert Speer, Hitler's chief architect. Its foundation extends 60 feet into the earth, and inside this unusual structure is a series of rooms that once contained instruments designed to measure the ground subsidence caused by its immense weight. The heavy load-bearing body played a crucial role in Hitler's grand vision for Berlin. The city, which he intended to rebuild and rechristen as Germania, was to become the capital of a new world order. This massive structure was a test, meant to determine if the swampy lands upon which Berlin was founded could support the gargantuan buildings of Hitler's dream. One such proposed structure was a monumental triumphal arch, designed to symbolize power and victory with its impressive scale. This arch, intended to be three times the size of Paris's renowned Arc de Triomphe, would be supported by two massive pillars. The heavy load-exerting body represented the size and weight of one of these pillars. However, as Germany shifted its focus and resources to the escalating war effort, plans for the arch were suspended indefinitely. Nonetheless, ground measurements continued at the site until June 1944. Another ambitious project in Hitler's grand design was the Volkshalle, the envisioned capital building of the Third Reich. This colossal dome would stand 960 feet high, with the capacity to hold more than 180,000 occupants. Upon sharing these plans with British and American engineers at the end of World War II, Albert Speer was informed that such an immense structure would likely generate clouds from the breaths of those inside. Though the Schwerbelastungskörper still stands, the Volkshalle, the centerpiece of Hitler's Germania, was ultimately never realized. Project Riza and Hitler's Flytrap The concept of governing from secure locations beneath the Earth's surface is not unique. Nearly all governments possess bunker systems. However, Hitler's pursuit of this strategy was on a scale unparalleled in human history. Under the highly secretive codename Project Riza, or Project Giant, Hitler endeavored to construct an immense network of bomb-proof underground tunnels and chambers. The exact motivation behind this ambitious underground city remains speculative due to the project's sensitivity and the scarcity of surviving documents. Providing the manpower for this enormous undertaking were prisoners of war and concentration camp victims who were subjected to forced labor. The laborers, which included children as young as 10 and totaled at least 13,000, excavated massive quantities of rock, dug reservoirs, created sewage systems, and felled trees. It's estimated that a minimum of 5,000 people perished during the project. Project Riza called for the construction of seven primary underground complexes scattered throughout the Owl Mountains region, which was then part of Nazi Germany, but now lies within present-day Poland. Work on all seven structures commenced in 1943. However, due to slow progress, Albert Speer took control of the project in April 1944. He relocated the project headquarters to Kajaz Castle, an opulent Renaissance fortress initially built in 1292. Beneath the castle, laborers carved out 1.2 miles of tunnels in the bedrock, connecting them to the surface via a 165-foot elevator shaft. As World War II drew to a close, none of the seven structures reached completion, with a mere six miles of the planned tunnels excavated. Historians believe that the subterranean network was intended to house central headquarters and underground factories for arms production to sustain the Nazi war effort, despite the tide turning against them by 1943. Allegedly, plans also included a rail tunnel connecting all underground complexes, sparking rumors of undiscovered tunnels hiding lost gold plundered by the Nazis. A peculiar remnant of this endeavor is the Muchalapka, a circle of interconnected concrete pillars that bear a striking resemblance to a traditional flytrap from which it derives its name. While some fringe theorists assert that the structure may have been intended as a launch pad for Nazi flying saucers built according to extraterrestrial blueprints, others dismiss it as the base of an unfinished water tank. Villa Winter In a remote part of the Canary Islands, the impressive Villa Winter, constructed by reclusive German engineer Gustav Winter, stands in a state of decay. The villa features a tower that provides a sweeping 360-degree view of the desolate landscape, accessible only by a single dirt track. Some assert that the remnants of a concealed airstrip lie before the property, resembling another airstrip known to have been constructed by Winter earlier in his career. The villa's extreme isolation and ties to the Nazi party have sparked countless theories regarding its true purpose, with many speculating that it was built to conceal something, 
The origins of Villa Vinter are also shrouded in mystery. While Vinter himself claims to have built it in 1958, Spanish authorities maintain that it was completed in 1946, and local residents assert that it was finished in 1937. Adding to the intrigue, the circumstances under which Villa Vinter was constructed remain disputed. Some suggest that the Spanish army built it and heavily guarded the site during construction, while others contend that forced labor from a nearby prison camp was employed. The most pervasive theory proposes that the villa's tower was equipped with an electric light used to signal German U-boats, aiding their navigation and communication. Supporting this notion is the presence of a fuse box within the tower. Some variations of this theory speculate that the villa is merely the above-ground portion of a hidden U-boat base. In 2019, footage emerged revealing the villa's interior spaces, including tunnels and bunker-like basements with walls more than six and a half feet thick and arched ceilings, seemingly designed to withstand explosions. Pedro Fumero, the villa's current resident, recalls playing in the basement as a child and discovering a room with shackles wide enough to restrain a person. He has also found U-boat batteries and other items, suggesting that Vinter may have restocked U-boats from his villa. Fumero has sought assistance in exploring the site, but has since been barred from investigating any unexcavated areas within the complex. Despite the numerous theories, some quite plausible, Vinter and his widow insisted until their deaths that the villa was built solely to exploit local natural resources for agricultural purposes. One of the more obscure theories linking Villa Vinter to the Third Reich suggests that a clinical, white-tiled room within the complex might have served as an operating theater. This theory posits that the villa was used to perform surgical, cosmetic alterations on high-ranking Nazis, including Hitler himself, enabling their escape to Brazil and Argentina. Argentina Jungle Hideout as the Allied forces triumphantly entered Berlin in 1945, some speculate that Adolf Hitler and his wife evaded death by leaving behind the corpses of body doubles and fleeing to Argentina. While that theory lacks evidence, it is well documented that many high-ranking Nazis found refuge in South America, escaping justice for their heinous war crimes. Utilizing forged Red Cross passports, these Nazis traveled freely and remained largely untried for their actions. Among them were infamous figures, such as Joseph Mengele, the notorious Angel of Death, responsible for countless experiments at Auschwitz, and SS Colonel Rauf, who designed a mobile gas chamber that claimed over 100,000 lives. An estimated 9,000 Nazis sought sanctuary in South America, with the majority settling in Argentina. Home to a sizable German-descended population, this country maintained neutrality for most of World War II. While many Nazis lived openly, some notorious individuals were rumored to hide in remote locations. One such rumor centered around overgrown ruins in northern Argentina's Teucuare jungle preserve. Local legend suggested that these ruins once sheltered Hitler's personal secretary, Martin Bormann. Despite DNA evidence connecting Bormann to a skeleton discovered in Berlin, researchers from the University of Buenos Aires decided to investigate the site in 2015. Deep within the rainforest, the team uncovered various ruined structures and artifacts, including German coins and porcelain, fueling suspicions of Nazi involvement. The buildings appeared unfinished, but their ten-foot-thick walls indicated plans for a grand structure. With some coins dating back to 1938, researchers theorized that the ruins might have been built as a potential hideout for the Nazis if they had lost World War II. Skeptics of this theory argue that the ruins predate the Second World War, attributing their construction to Jesuits long before the Nazi era. Additionally, given the protection and impunity offered to escape Nazis in Argentina, there would have been little need to hide. The debate surrounding these enigmatic ruins and their possible connection to the Nazis who find refuge in Argentina continues to this day. Prora Nestled on the German island of Rügen in the Baltic Sea lies a vast complex called the Colossus of Prora. Constructed in the late 1930s under Hitler's orders, the expansive resort stretches along 4.5 kilometers of idyllic beachfront, originally featuring eight identical buildings. Prora was designed as a Nazi holiday resort within the Strength Through Joy program, a Nazi initiative aimed at boosting worker morale by providing recreational facilities. Envisioned as wholesome, family-friendly, affordable, and Nazi-inspired, the resort was intended to embody a bright, hopeful vision of life under the regime's rule. The Grand Resort was to house a cinema, multiple swimming pools, a theater, and various other forms of entertainment. Its vast apartment blocks, each spanning 450 meters, could accommodate up to 20,000 guests, all with views of the sea. Despite Hitler's ambition to create the, quote, most mighty and large resort ever, 
Construction was never completed. Two years into the project, costs soared to nearly 240 million Reichsmarks, equivalent to $1.4 billion today. With war on the horizon, the undertaking was abandoned, and workers shifted to V-bomb factory production. For decades, the unfinished Prora languished, sporadically inhabited by soldiers, refugees, and others. Over time, the complex was repurposed, with Soviet and East German armies occupying the buildings and even demolishing some for materials. In 2013, a section of Prora finally transformed into a modern resort, complete with a hotel, youth hostel, and apartments. Today, the Colossus of Prora has been redeveloped into numerous permanent residences, many of which are listed as holiday homes and available through platforms like Airbnb. While the intended Nazi vacationers never graced its halls, Prora's massive scale and storied past continue to captivate visitors and residents. What did the Nazis actually have planned for Project Riza? Let me know what you think in the comments. And thank you for watching Dark Five. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.